Welcome back to Women in Racing. It's clear that staff shortages are becoming a major issue within the thoroughbred industry. How can we encourage the younger generation? Lindy Morris is an inspiring woman who founded Thoroughbred Industry Careers, a pivotal organisation bridging that very important gap for young aspiring individuals. Lindy, we find ourselves here at Richmond TAFE um, with a huge cadet ship being taken place, but the interesting part is how you actually got into racing. Um, so starting from the beginning, I grew up in a little country town called Walker and my mum was an equestrian and she also used to ride track work and she was um, an apprentice, uh, sorry, an amateur jockey in the 1960s. So racing was never far from our lives, but we grew up sort of horses were our life every day we rode and competed and um, and so I always had an interest in racing it was always something that I uh, thought I wanted to pursue I kind of probably had a dream to be a jockey uh, for a fleeting moment but my dad really wanted me to go to university so I went to uni and studied a business degree and um, straight after I finished that I got on a plane to England and flew, to, flew uh, over and worked for the Vesti family riding horses in their stables for a couple of years and I came back to Australia and had a meeting with the ATC with the marketing manager at the time and asked him you know I, I did a business degree I want to work in racing and his advice to me was go away and work in big business work in marketing I did that uh, I worked for George Patterson Bates for quite a few years in advertising and I had a chance dinner with Melissa O'Gorman, who's married to Maddie Smith at Warwick Farm, and um, she was telling me about a job going for Ozhorse um, when John Massara was chairman there. And I was lucky enough to get the job, and the job was for three months out of the English offices in Sydney for the Easter Yearling Sale, and, and I ended up staying with them for seven or eight years. So where did thoroughbred industry careers come from? So I, I was at Pony Club and I had a conversation with a mum who said to me, um, Lindy, I heard you worked in the racing industry. I'm wondering if there's any opportunities for my son. He's in year 10 at school and loves his horses. And I said, oh, yeah, where do I start? You know, sit down and I had a chat to her and I, I went away from that conversation and it just, I started thinking about my own experience. And I was 26 before I got into racing, but I always kind of knew that I wanted to work in it. So... For me, I started thinking about my own experience and what this mum had asked, and I, and I went away from it and, it and I just started looking into what are we doing and um, I decided that I wanted to really focus on that and I don't know, it just it was just felt natural to me to want to do that. It's been well documented that there's a shortage of staff within the racing industry and it's I know from the grassroots of me being involved in the industry it's really hard to find mm. good staff but there's mm. so many people out there who can ride. Yes and that's the other thing you know for you and I Lizzie who, are, who, who listen to people talking about you know the issues of getting staff I guess that for me is, was in my subconscious too that so when I got to Pony Club after all of those years of being away working and I'm seeing all these kids riding around, I was thinking, wow, you know, there's some great little riders here. Here's the future of our workforce. And it's not even just about filling people in jobs. For me, racing has given me such a great life that for me, my, what personally motivates me is I don't want these kids to go without too. You know, if you love horses, I want them to know about these careers because I feel like it'll, it'll, it'll bring them happiness and a fulfilled life. So. There's lots of elements for it for me that sort of came together and I thought, you know, this is what I want to do. It's started now, but it wasn't an easy process to get things going. How did you get the ball rolling initially? Um, so I'd been consulting to the, the Kelly family at New Haven Park um, for some time while my kids were little and when I got back from Dubai. And so I spoke to John and said I wanted to focus on this, you know, full time. So really it took me 18 months. I just was I, I stopped doing any work, other work, and just started researching what we do in Australia, how we train and educate, how they do it overseas, um, what I thought was lacking, or what I thought we could improve on. And I just drove to Sydney every week and to the Hunter and had meetings and just tried to get my head around it. And I wrote a research document documenting that time. Um, and then through the help of John Massara and, and some other key people, 
you know, we got some of the big players in the room to, to chip in some money to, to kick off. When you first started the marketing campaign to encourage participants to um, enrol, how yes. did you find the feedback from everyone that you were uh, able to sort of, you know, get the message across? Yeah, it was, it was in really interesting. We only had a really short time frame to market this particular program. So thoroughbred industry careers, you know, it, it, there's a lot to that and there'll be a lot of initiatives and programs we'll work on. The Explorer program is the first cab off the rank and that was, that was born out of an idea that offering accommodation while we train people to get them work ready would be a real benefit in Australia, considering our riders are, are all over Australia and not, not come from an area where we essentially train. So that's the first thing we'll tackle and we had 160 people apply in just a few weeks, which was quite extraordinary, much more than I thought. Um, so we've taken the first group of 30 kids that had just started last week, um, 30 young people, and they've come from northern Queensland to WA, um, South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales. Um, so we just tried to cherry pick a really good range of people that I thought would work in the program and their attitude was the number one um, point for me. If to get on they had to have a really good attitude and a good work ethic. So we'll see how that group go, um, but it's really exciting. When you were picking the applicants, not a lot of them had any racing connection or racing experience. They just had a, a real passion for horses. Yes, yep. There was only, there's only one student whose um, mum is a small trainer in WA. Um, the rest of them had a real love for horses and a good riding background. Some of them had a, just a love of racing and no riding background. So the general feedback was um, that, you know, this is fantastic because I didn't know how, where, where or how to start. So that was pleasing for me, I guess. That was satisfying that we'd hopefully doing something that will help and change these kids' lives. You know, there's one girl who watched the Melbourne Cup when she was 10 years old and she's been studying pedigrees from around the world ever since. All she does is read books about racing, although she'd never physically been to a racetrack or been around horses. So watching her journey in the last 10 days has been absolutely fascinating and she's she's incredible, her knowledge is incredible. What was it like when she first was started interacting with the horses? She just couldn't take the smile off her face. Uh, I stood with her, we went to the races on Saturday and we got, we were right on the finishing post when Champagne Cuddles crossed the line and she burst into tears and she just because obviously when you're at the track and you're hearing the horses and you and you ha have that atmosphere of the noise and and the horses right in front of you she was totally she was totally speechless so it was such an incredible it was it was great for me to be with her when she she did that because there's not one thing that she doesn't know about breeding or you know she watches racing 24 hours a day she's extraordinary so and then taking her to the yearling sales and all of that was it was quite emotional really. What do you think would have happened to someone like herself who, if you hadn't have created this course to bridge that gap? I honestly don't know and it's a good question that I'll probably ask her in time because she's 21, um, this is her first time out of home and um, I think she'll be something extraordinary in our industry but I, I don't know, she's from Rockhampton in Queensland, I, I don't know what she would, I don't think she would have had the confidence to ever go and ask for a job at a racetrack because she's got no horse experience. So we'll give her the basics here, but she she will do something involving pedigrees or breeding. I mean, she I can see her working at the Australian Stud Book or for Arian pedigrees or something like that. She she'll be she'll be a super brain. You sound very proud of her already. <laughs> yeah, she's, it's been gorgeous getting to know them. You know. It's almost like you're a mother of, of yes. 35 extra children now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been signing off my emails to, uh, to everyone saying the headmistress or inheriting 30, 30 new children. But that's a lovely thing in itself, you know, watching these kids grow and develop. You know, we've got a young boy on the course who, who absolutely loves racing but never really had that opportunity in life to, to ride or have lessons. And he's, he cannot take the smile off his face ear to ear he said all I'm doing is all I can think about is riding and he's got such great natural balance he'll get there because he is just struck by it you know 
So even though he didn't grow up around them, it, it, he'll still get there because it's just, he feels like he's born to do it. It's the passion. He's passionate and he just is so happy. I don't think this kid's ever felt this happy before. Going back to the course and the structure of it, how does it, how they first arrive being here a week and a half, how does it all uh, play out and some of the instructors that are included in the course? The course is 12 months. Uh, the first three months is spent here at Richmond, so at the Australian Racing and Equine Academy, which was set up by Racing New South Wales and TAFE New South Wales. Basically, they have three months really of what we call boot camp. So I've got them up every morning, they run at 6.30, they're already up to three or so k's a morning. They'll get up to five k's running. Um, they'll have breakfast every morning together. Um, Ram, Ram vet chipped in and supplied their breakfast every morning. They're not allowed out on the track riding until they've had a great breakfast. Um, so they'll do these three months of, of excursions. They'll have industry people coming and speaking to them. They're riding every day. They're handling horses every day. They'll get a really good, hopefully solid base in that three months so that we can go and put them out into the workplace. Then they'll do four and a half months for a trainer and they'll do four and a half months on a stud farm. And then after that 12 months, we'll sit down with them and work out what area they thought, you know, they think might interest them to either study further or to go into the workplace. So it's their opportunity to explore a whole industry in, in 12 months. And I designed it like that, or we designed it like that because, you know, the breeding industry is so extensive and the racing industry is so extensive and there's so many roles you can do. But if you go into one area, sometimes it takes you a long time, you know, to see all the different elements and work out how everything fits in. So. So this is really a unique opportunity to, to see it all and to hopefully find what, what will be their ultimate career path. Because that gives them the opportunity to some of them may start in racing but end up in breeding as they get older and they, um, they progress through their life. There's always those jobs throughout the industry and you're exposing them to that at the grassroots. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And we all know in the industry you start in one area like you did as a track rider and you've ended up in media and you know so it, it, the opportunities are vast and they're exciting and, and, and I'm, I keep saying to the kids now do not pigeonhole yourself, keep your mind open, take every day and learn all the things you're being taught. There's some absolutely incredible instructors here at the academy so I just want them to be open, learn every day, stop you know, don't get too carried away just yet, um, you know, and just relax and enjoy it. Thoroughbred Industry Careers was founded by yourself, but there had to be key participants who were able to back this um, startup program. Who were they? Yes, yeah, so um, it was born out of an idea, and then I went, I called John Massara about it and, and had a chat to him about it. and. Um, and then I spoke to, then I did the rounds really, and I spoke to Godolphin, and they obviously do a lot in that education space. So between John and Godolphin, really were, were key to me to, to get to get it going. Um, and so they supported it, and Chris Waller, um, Adrian Bott, and Gay Waterhouse, um, Lindsay Park, David Hayes, and Tony McAvoy, and the Australian Turf Club. They're the original seven who have supported this to get it up and running. So a fantastic group of you know employers to 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 work with when you pitched it to all of the the people who you've just mentioned what was their reaction um, it, it was really positive they had obviously thoughts to uh, you know they've experienced throughout their time employing large numbers of people you know so they had input as well um, but generally speaking it was really positive um, much more much easier than what I thought it would have been um, a lot of the times I was really nervous about going in and, and having those meetings because obviously it was, it had become so sort of dear to my heart to get this up and running. But no, they were absolutely incredible, really. They just got it, you know. The, the people I spoke to were just, they got it. Going back to the cadets this morning, I was we were watching them walking around and they broke into their trots and they were having a, a canter. They're up in the pads now. Yep. Interesting, I mean, they, a lot of them look like good riders. 
Yes, it, um, you know, it's hard to know until you see people on a horse really how good they are. But there's a lot of great little riders in there that I think, um, and a lot of them sort of aspire to be track work riders, which is great because our industry desperately needs track riders. So no, there's some really nice, neat little riders in there. It's really pleasing. 80% of them have come from showing, eventing, pony club. Yes. Some of them have, the ones we saw this morning have all had riding experience. But yes. It, only after a week and a half they look like they're really getting it. Yeah it was really pleasing to see them this morning. Some of them um, have sort of camp drafting backgrounds or rodeo backgrounds. Um, some of them are show, show riders, eventers, show jumpers but um, all in all those core skills are such great grounding for, for track riding as you and I know. Um, so they were looking pretty pretty smart this morning and they've only that was their fourth day riding today and they're going around the track in a pad and I know a lot of them are feeling it. I've had a lot of calls that they're absolutely, they thought they were pretty fit, but they're completely busted. It's, the, it's amazing the different muscle groups you're using yes. when you're riding shorter. Yes, and I tried to explain that to them. I said the first week that I started riding track work, I couldn't even pick up an empty bucket off the ground. I was so sore. And when you're 18 and you're used to riding horses all day every day, you're pretty fit, but it, nothing prepares you for that. And going back to that's why it's so important to have a controlled environment for yeah. these young women that we saw this morning. Yes. To bridge that gap to go into the stables because trainers don't have the time. Yes. And it's not a safe environment for them just to go into a stable. Yeah, and I feel I feel like it's hard for trainers because they're so busy and they work such long hours and we race so often that then on top of that to train staff is 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 a lot of pressure. So having them in this controlled environment on X race horses that have been vetted by the, the teachers here and who are safe, it just gives you that, gives the students that window of opportunity to learn safely and not, not, not get a fright, you know, and leave the industry because they just weren't prepared. So we're, we're hoping that we're easing them into it, but they will, we're seeing them riding on day four. By week 12, you know, I hope we see them really really flying and I hope that, that you know some of them can be great little riders for, for, for trainers out there. It's also important to remember that trainers only have one chance with a horse. They might be dealing with multi-million dollar horses and these uh, young people are going into the stable and they might be exposed to dealing with those horses so there isn't any room for error is there? Yeah there's no room for error so we'll, we will the teachers here are, are very experienced a lot of them have been high level track riders, foremen, eventers, equestrian people. So they really, they've worked in stables. So they, they're really going to give them that, the raw basics of, of, of what they need to know. So I'm hoping when we turn, when we, when we take them into industry, you know, they'll be at a level where they're safe and competent and an asset to someone, not a liability. The Explorer is the first cab off the rank, but I'm, I'm sure there's more up your sleeve. Yeah, this year will be really um, exciting. We've, we've agreed with Racing New South Wales to develop pony racing, which will be um, hopefully a really fantastic grassroots strategy for our sport. Um, as I spoke about before, you know, when you fall in love with the sport of racing, you know, it stays with you forever. And I think kids that can ride their ponies and, and race safely and, and have a great time, you know, and they don't need to buy really expensive horses like some of the horses you've got to buy for eventing and, 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 sh and, and show jumping and things. I think it'll be a great sport that a lot of, you know, rural New South Wales can, can fall in love with. So that's a really exciting thing and, and racing New South Wales have been fantastic to deal with and very supportive of thoroughbred industry careers and they're supporting us through this program as well. Um, the other initiative that we are looking at um, developing soon is, is based on the English model of race to schools and it's a numeracy and literacy program for school children to do on course. So we will work very closely with the ATC on our grassroots programs. Um, that, that is hosting school children from inner city um, Australia on inner city tracks and they, they do um, a workbook, a numeracy and literacy work, workbook. And it's all centred around 
the track so that kids who live near Ramwick can understand what what goes on there and the sport and what's behind it, whether it's the, the jockeys in the weighing room or the circumference of the track. And it's a really lovely way to introduce, you know, what's an important sport in, in our country to young people. Cricket is played in everyone in schools. Yeah. So is football, AFL, yeah. if you're in Melbourne. Racing is obviously a little bit hard to have in schools, but that's a fantastic way to encourage and open children's eyes to our sport because it's not a lot it's not all about wagering we don't want it all to be an adult sport we need to encourage them from the bottom to yeah. be able to be interested in the art uh, it, it's such a great sport i think we, we as a sport we lose a lot of ground because kids don't play it from a young age you know you, you see your own children playing rugby playing cricket and they're obsessive. My 11-year-old watches every game, knows the names of the bats that the Sri Lankan team are playing with. And I'm blown away by that. But racing, we miss that because, you know, we have no engagement with, with kids at that participation level. So I really see pony racing as doing a lot of wonderful things for our sport. You know, I, I see that as in a way to break down barriers, to educate them about the fitness of their ponies and all the different things that that are so wonderful about our sport. And I'm just, I can't wait to get started on that. That'll be something that, that you know, that for me, that will be really special. It's really nice to hear that we're being able to show off racing in a really positive light. Yes, and it's huge in the UK and Ireland, you know, and in America as well. And there's now an international pony race. Last year was held in Abu Dhabi. Um, you know, Frankie Dottori's daughter, I think, son maybe raced in that. Um, I love it because everyone, can, everyone that's got a pony can participate in it. You know, it's not elitist, it's fun. You know, it goes back to that just core riding skills and having a great time. And I can, I, you know, imagine, you know, I lie in bed at, at night and dream about, you know, all these kids from, from you know, west or all over New South Wales competing against one another. and. You know, you've got all these wonderful inter-school events, you know, there's nothing stopping us from, you know, having a pony race as part of that and, and also, you know, whether we could, you know, piggyback all the amazing work done by Racing New South Wales with the country and provincial championships, you know, if you could tack on pony races at the, the start of those races and then have the best of the country kids all competing, I mean, that would be, you know, to see them running down, you know, the straight if and when one day at Royal Ramwick, I mean, that would be incredible. And it inspires the, the families of those kids, you know, because then they're watching and, you know, it's, and it's all about, for me, it's all about the sport of racing. That's what I love. I love the horses and the, and the sport and the people in it, you know, so introducing our sport to, to people is something to be proud of. It sounds like you really want to make sure that racing has longevity. Yeah, I think so. I think... Um, I think it's been such a huge part of what makes Australia, you know, so unique. You know, when I was hosting all those overseas bloodstock agents and buyers and owners in Australia many, many moons ago, they were blown away by racing in Australia. Like they, particularly the Americans, they just couldn't believe how vibrant and exciting it was. And I think when you live in Australia, you get very used to that and you think that that's everywhere. And it's not everywhere. It's, re it's a really special sport and to grow that and have people fall in love with it, um, you know, that, that will be, that's the end game. It's really to bridge that gap between young people and our sport and hopefully that, that helps our labour force as well. And that's where it all came from, that's the reason why this has yep. been born. Yeah, so 18 months of just thinking about, it's all I thought about, just all, all day every day I just thought about how do we you know, what can we do as a sport, you know, so we're already this year will sponsor the National Pony Club Championships, we're the name sponsor of that, so hosting the best kids from all over Australia through Pony Club, so I want every kid that's looked sideways at a horse to know that we're a great industry and know the opportunities where they can live a full life. If you love riding, there's no other industry that you can work in like this, so for me it's just a no-brainer, and if I'd gone through my life working in an ad agency forever, I would have felt like I was selling my soul. So I want to give young people what it's given to me and that's what makes me. Job satisfaction. Yeah, it's what, it's, it's not something that I ever want to pat on the back for, it's just something that we have to do. Do you know, this is what, I feel like this was what I was born to do.